Welcome to ILTV's Insider. I'm Aaron Porras, and today we talk about the potential end of an era. The right-wing makeup of the Knesset threatened by a seemingly unimportant and procedural vote that could very well see Prime Minister Netanyahu's historic tenure overturned. I'm speaking, of course, about the Arrangements Committee, the first committee to be formed after every Knesset election and which is in charge of forming other committees as well as controlling the legislative agenda. And in a surprise vote in the Knesset the other night, the right-wing makeup of the committee was replaced with one proposed by Netanyahu's rival, Yair Lapid, giving new political power to the anti-Netanyahu bloc. So with that, Likud MK and chair of the Arrangements Committee, Miki Zohar, reading the supposed writing on the wall, saying that it's apparent to him that Netanyahu will soon be leading the opposition. But joining us to discuss is former Likud Knesset member and president of the Likud Supreme Court, Michael Kleiner, and former Israeli ambassador Hello. to the United States, Dani Aelon. Thank you both so much for being with us. All right. Now, Dani, I'll start with you. What happens next, and how significant is this news with respect to our stalemate situation right now uh, in building a coalition? Well, it is uh, significant, but uh, this is not really the issue. The issue is the stalemate. Uh, it is quite obvious that the political uh, system here in Israel uh, is not really uh, adjusted and not fit to uh, the Israeli public and the political needs of uh, the country. It's a very convoluted system, which has resulted now in uh, four elections uh, right in a row without uh, any decisive uh, outcome. Now, in the past, and uh, I'm sure my good friend Michael Kleiner would uh, uh, also uh, attest to that, in the past, when the public, uh, there was a clear uh, gravity to one or the other sides on the political map. Until 1977, it was the Labour Party. From 77, it was Likud. Until uh, very recently, when this was decisive, the political system was not, uh, let's say, so uh, um, damaging um, any any outcome or the, the governability of, uh, of, of the state. But now it has become too problematic. I believe that it started back in 96 with the direct vote for prime minister, because what has happened was the proliferation of smaller parties and taking away uh, from the big parties. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we will need to see a political reform. This is, I think, I hope that the only good outcome that can come from this um, imbroglio is the understanding by the leaders of this country, and especially by the members of Knesset and the heads of the parties, that this is an emergency time. Let put, as they say, egos aside, political interests, party interests aside, and come together into a special uh, uh, vote on a reform, which can be done very, very easily because the work has been already done on that. So it's just a matter of decision now. So, so Michael, I w let's turn to you. Do you agree with Ambassador Ayalon that, that the Arrangements Committee is not really important, that, we should, that that's a smokescreen even? Yeah, this, uh, this is the one thing I agree, because we are in a situation where uh, the balance of power in the committee was held before the vote by Yamina and the United the Arab List, and after the vote, it's all held by both those parties, so nothing uh, changed, and uh, both parties are still open to any side. What I disagree with, uh, Danny, is uh, that uh, there is a hung parliament. In the parliament today, there are 75 members of Knesset out of 120 defining themselves as right wing, 25 per center, and only the rest is left. There is one issue, the issue of Netanyahu, of anti-Netanyahu and pro-Netanyahu, which are uh, somehow balanced in the Knesset. So that's why uh, there, it is a temporary situation that will disappear a day, the day after uh, Netanyahu, the day after Netanyahu, two things will happen. No more uh, a, a, a question of uh, a, no more tie, but a, a big majority for the right. And the second is that the glue that was holding together the change block will evaporate because there's nothing united the Yamina and um, a, a, the Gidon Saar and the United the Arab List and the, the joint, uh, the joint uh, communist list of the Arabs Nothing in merits and Labour Party. Well, without Netanyahu, they are totally a, a different parties that cannot work together. So I, it's, I don't agree that one is to change the 
a system permanently because of the temporary situation, which you can solve by a special means that is going to the public, ask them, who do you want to be a prime minister? The moment the public will decide who is the prime minister, the current Knesset can function for four years very easily. And uh, that's, that's and, and because the chain block says we have a majority against Netanyahu, why are you afraid to go to the public and ask the public? If the public is really against Netanyahu, you have an opportunity in 20 days, hold an election only for prime minister. And if there is a majority uh, 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 against Netanyahu, you can get rid of him. Why don't you accept it? Unless you think that majority, that Netanyahu has a majority. And if Netanyahu has a majority, you don't have a case. All right, well, so they what, don't have a case. So, you know, Ambassador, you mentioned earlier that the only way to get through this is maybe a change in the system. Uh, well, Prime Minister Netanyahu, as, as you also mentioned, is still pushing for a creative way to avoid fifth election, specifically by enacting a direct vote, one-time vote, for Prime Minister, as suggested by the religious Shas party. Uh, we have a sound bite. Let's play that right now. יש פתרון לפלונטר הפוליטי, ורוב עצום בציבור תומך בו. במקום להרכיב ממשלות אבסורדיות, למשל עם ראש ממשלה שקיבל בבחירות רק שבעה מנדטים, יתקיימו בחירות ישירות לראשות הממשלה. הציבור יבחר ישירות את ראש הממשלה בבחירות בזק, בלי לפזר את הכנסת. Why wouldn't it work, specifically, this time around at least? Right, because this is only halfway uh, and it's not going to be uh, a, a, a solution because uh, if you just do now a, a vote or an election for the prime minister and you still have the composition of the Knesset as it is now, our uh, system is not a presidential system yet. It is, I mean... I, I would hope to be, uh, but uh, this is a different issue. Right now, it's a parliamentarian uh, um, system where uh, the prime minister, in, in order to rule, in order to get his government functioning, he has to have the confidence of the Knesset. And because of the stalemate in the Knesset, as it is now, a uh, election of a prime minister uh, directly will not solve the composition of the Knesset, where you have all the parties that are not really mashing together. And, uh, and if you really want to go all the way and to find a comprehensive solution, you would do a, um, a, a direct election for prime minister, but you would supplement that with regional elections as well, direct elections of, uh, of the members of Knesset by regions. And you can just uh, divide the country into 120 uh, districts like the United States, this not only will um, but, but wouldn't, but wouldn't that promote But wouldn't that promote gerry a gerrymandering type situation like in the United States, which could ultimately even serve to divide the country further? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Listen, uh, there is no perfect uh, solution, unfortunately, as Churchill said, that uh, democracy is the worst, uh, uh, <laughs> the worst uh, system of governance, except he doesn't know anyone which is better than that. So, uh, yeah, gerrymandering could be uh, one of the uh, side effects, but this is a minor side effect uh, in contrast to uh, really governing the country and putting the, uh, the, the, all the, the political divides aside. Um, I also think that a uh, direct vote, an original vote for members of Knesset would bring better uh, representatives because they will have to be answerable to the people. They will have to uh, take care of their, uh, their own um, uh, district, and they will not be uh, elected by a smoke-filled uh, uh, um, uh, back rooms or all kinds of deals, uh, whether it's uh, in, a, uh, uh, in a political uh, uh, deal or whether it is uh, another deal. I think it would be easier and better to change the system altogether here. Michael? No, oh, I believe Israel is a very small country. It's uh, unnatural for Israel to be divided to districts. Uh, in in um, Likud, the Democratic Party people do answer to uh, 130,000 members and elected democratically. Maybe we should, by law, force all the other uh, parties also to hold the uh, democratic uh, primaries 
uh, like, uh, like in the Likud. Uh, I also disagree that uh, if, uh, for example, Netanyahu is elected directly by the public, he still will be, uh, find it hard to form a government. As the right-wing party said that uh, they, they agree ideologically with the Likud, the only difference is that they wanted to replace Netanyahu. If the public decides otherwise, they will have no more, uh, no, no, uh, no, no uh, reasoning why not join a the government. They didn't make Netanyahu prime minister, the public did, so now they can uh, join the government. And also the United Arab List, um, when the um, right-wing party of the Smotrich said they don't mm -hmm. want uh, to... Uh, what uh, will vote for a government uh, with the United Arab List? It was not because they don't want them in the coalition. They agreed that uh, uh, this united the front that made a big, dramatic change in its attitude towards the state of Israel will be part of the uh, government. They didn't want to depend on it. Once Netanyahu uh, was elected directly by the public, they no more depend on it. And then uh, everybody can join the government. I believe uh, Netanyahu, after elected, by the public and form a coalition of 90 members. And if uh, Yair Lapid wants to join it, he will be blessed and uh, welcome because Israel needs a uh, unity. And after the public will decide who is the prime minister, and then uh, it's much easier to form a wide national unity government. So I, I want to go back now to your suggestion, though, to forcing every party to have uh, intra-party primaries for, for their party lists. It's my understanding that such an idea has been floated in the Knesset floor before, but it was rejected wholeheartedly, especially by parties like Shas, UTJ, uh, Avigdor Lieberman's party, Ye uh, no, Yeshati. No, people like... Yeah? No. Uh, secular parties who have membership would be forced to make democratic elections. Uh, religious parties, where the list is not decided by politician, but by a religious authority. Well, why, like well, why, should, like they, why should they be exempt, and like then? United, because... and, like, and also the United Arab List, that is elected by the Shura, a, 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 a Muslim clergyman, would be allowed not to hold the primary. But every party which is not elected by clergymen, or the list is not elected by clergymen, will have to uh, open why, the doors for why, why would you exempt and, the religious and parties? Make an election. Why would you exempt the religious parties from having, from having the same guidelines as the rest? I tell you, because if some uh, outside authority is uh, determining the list, so then they have a justification. I cannot well, that's, accept That's not exact. I, I don't know if you, we could call that justified. That, that's not very democratic at all. If you have an outside source d deciding what is going on democratically in the Knesset, that's not exactly democratic. No, uh, but if people vote for it, it's okay. Uh, I guess it will not be accepted by people in secular parties where uh, there is no reason, no uh, logical reason uh, why uh, people uh, will not uh, participate and influence and take part in uh, determining the list and not allowing one man to appoint his friends and family uh, to be automatic uh, voting machines for him in the Knesset. Danny, what, what, what's your thought on forcing everybody? Oh, well, I, uh, and, I, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a, and, and I really have the greatest respect to, to Michael, but I think it's a very dangerous idea because you have to have the same yardstick for all parties. If you start to distinguish between parties, you know, it, it doesn't end there. And, and then you can uh, have uh, different behaviors and different rules for anybody here in the country. That's not a democracy. It's just uh, either a dictatorship or it could be chaotic. Um, if you want to take it a step further, I, I do believe that um, uh, uh, primaries uh, should be in every party, if possible, uh, but not just a, a, um, a closed primaries. Uh, Michael is right. Likud has primaries, but this is closed primaries among a certain and very finite number of people, which is not very big. In order to be true primaries, you have to open it, just like the United States open primaries where everybody can vote and then you cannot do deals because right now you have so many deals uh, of you know washing hands uh, of, of each other which doesn't bring the best and the brightest to the fore and um, that goes back you know if you talk about the uh, religious parties uh, I can go even deeper and say well maybe we need a separation between the state and uh, and and religion 
uh, this also is something that has to be decided. Unfortunately, you know, the uh, father, the uh, uh, founding fathers of the modern state of Israel were going, they voted on the first Knesset back in 1948, they voted for a constitution to be uh, uh, designed mm. by a specific uh, um, a forum. This has not been the case. Maybe it's now time to revisit the issue of a constitution for Israel. Uh, by the way, the United States, certain, uh, certain uh, states have open primaries, certain states have closed primaries, some states allow even cross-voting between the parties. Uh, this is a state issue, not a federal issue. But in Israel, I, I believe uh, it should be regulated by the state. Likud, 140,000 members, is a very big forum. <clears throat> I believe that uh, if we want to encourage membership, I am against the open primaries, because, because then it's really a, a, a opening place for manipulation. They try to do it those days in the Likud, some people. Trying well, to, well, what uh, about what about what Ambassador Ayalon was saying about about Likud. what about what Ambassador Ayalon was saying already about uh, you know scratching each other's backs and making backroom deals already? Does that no, not exist? No, so this is, that was changed. This was when the Central Committee of four thousand people was electing the people. This is one of the reasons we removed it from the Central Committee to a forum of hundred forty thousand, which is really a public opinion. And no deals can influence because there are many free people. And uh, you see, according to the results, the people who are popular, people who are liked in the public, are also the ones who are elected in these uh, primaries. All right. Now, I, I want to turn things back maybe to the reality, because as interesting as a lot of the ideas we floated here are, it's pretty unrealistic that any of them would come to fruition anytime soon, especially with a caretaker government. So getting back to the situation at hand, what are the options? How do we prevent a fifth election and who has the best chance to do it? Ambassador? I, well, I believe... Oh, okay, so go, go ahead. Please, go ahead, Mike. No, I, I believe that still Netanyahu has a card in his hand. First of all, he still has a mandate for two weeks. And then he has a op op possibility to build a homogeneous uh, government, which is not the case with the other side, as I said before, which only uh, the only glue uniting them is the hatred to Netanyahu, and, and they know that nothing will is, uh, um, will uh, left, be left of it the day after uh, Netanyahu was elected. So I believe that either uh, uh, Smotrich will at last uh, understand that uh, he has to uh, um, he, he cannot. Uh, bring down a right-wing government that will uh, support the government, though it will be also supported by the United Arab List. And uh, the second uh, possibility is uh, that um, Gidon Saar, at the end of the day, uh, will make some uh, compromise and find a way how to uh, uh, demand enough changes that can publicly justify his uh, joining uh, against the uh, not only the government, but joining the Likud. The, the, uh, the option for uh, Gidon Saar is either come back to the Likud or stay in opposition. Ambassador? Well, I, I, I do agree. I do agree that, uh, you know, Smotrich is, is a key here. I think that uh, there should be more pressure on Smotrich. I don't think that uh, any serious discussion was with him. Uh, not only from the political echelons, but also by the spiritual leaders and the rabbis uh, that uh, could really direct him uh, to the government of uh, Netanyahu. I think he should show more gratitude because the six uh, votes, the six mandates he got was only because of uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu actually... It's 100% uh, right and 100% him. agree with Dani. Yeah, yeah, I, I think this is the key. This is the key. Is there is there another option, uh, maybe an outsider, uh, like uh, I don't just just for the example, uh, Naftali Bennett coming in with, even though he has just seven seats, coming in and, and forming a centrist right wing government behind him. Yeah, this is also an option. It exists. Uh, some people say that uh, already uh, some drafts uh, going from side uh, to side. Uh, this will be a very fragile government and not a coherent government. Uh, I, I can see how it may be elected. I can hardly see how it may uh, function, take decisions, 
because they uh, practically uh, disagree on uh, and everything. They disagree except of uh, the wish to uh, bring down Netanyahu. Ambassador, your response? Yeah, and, and I think this is the sorry state of the uh, Israeli political system now that really there is no vision or ideology. It's either for Netanyahu or against Netanyahu. So there, there are two options. Either uh, you ask Netanyahu to step aside, because uh, let's say if he stepped aside, uh, in a minute there would be a government with the Likud at the head and all the others, Gidon Saar and Smart, all of them, and Bennett uh, can join in. Or, or uh, on the other hand is, to have uh, another uh, elections because I don't see that uh, <laughs> the anti the anti uh, uh, Bibi camp that they have anything together and I'm not sure that uh, this will uh, uh, stick for a, a a long time. So then I go back to if we had really this is what I say now if we really had responsible visionary politicians today, they would come together and uh, uh, decide together on a, either a, uh, a special uh, election, but with different rules, um, different system. It's not going to be too difficult to change the system because there has been so much work on it. Back in 1992, when they changed the system to direct vote of prime minister, they didn't think through. And they didn't do a, uh, com a, com a, com a supplementary uh, uh, steps, like as I mentioned, the regional elections. Maybe this is the time to do that. Uh, otherwise, we may have another election and another election until, until Bibi retires. You know that uh, even in England last time, in, yeah. even in England, you had regional election and, that's a, a, and there was a hanged parliament that uh, a, a, by the hands, a, hold the power by hands of eight uh, members of uh, parliament from Northern Ireland. Uh, it's some a little uh, strange group, and uh, and that's uh, that's what gave power to Theresa May. So oh. technical solutions are not always uh, helpful or enough. All right. Well, with that, thank you so much, Michael Kleiner, Ambassador Danny Ailon, for joining us. I'm Aaron Porras again, and please tune in next time on Insider for More on everything Israel. If there's a topic that you'd like us to cover, let us know about it in the comment sections online. And finally, for more news from Israel, follow ILTV on Facebook and on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube and to our ILTV.TV channels. Thank you so much. Be well. We'll see you soon.